Hi guys, in this video we are going to review how to simplify a radical expression. Um, so quick warm-up, quick review is reminding ourselves what the symbol square root looks like and what it means. So remember the answer or the simplified version of that is what number times itself twice equals 49. So the answer to that is 7. So the square root of 49 is 7 because 7 times 7 equals 49. So it has to be the same number. That's unique about square roots. So what number times itself is 9? 3. Square root of 225 is 15. And 121 is 11. Okay. Um, I would recommend you guys having your um, square roots... Memorize, honestly, up through probably 15 squared. Um, it just makes your life a lot faster when you're simplifying these expressions, okay? So what we call the whole thing together is a radical expression. Um, what's underneath the radical is the radicand, and you heard me say it, but the symbol itself is called the radical, okay? We're just going to be dealing with square roots in this class, but we can have cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, on and on, and that'll be designated with a number up here called the index, but we're not going to worry too much about that for geometry. Um, all of those warm-ups, one, two, three, and four, are what we call a perfect square. And a perfect square is just a number whose square root is a nice whole number answer. Okay, if it's not a perfect square, its square root is an irrational number, meaning it's a decimal that goes on forever without any sort of pattern. So we're going to be looking specifically for perfect squares today. Um, rules, when we're doing operations with square roots, I can multiply square roots together underneath the same symbol. Okay, or if it's more convenient, I can actually break it apart as well. So multiplication, we can either combine or we can break apart. Either way is still equivalent, okay? So we're gonna be simplifying radicals, and basically what that means is that what's underneath the radical symbol cannot have any more perfect square factors. So we're gonna talk more about that here. So I'm gonna show you two methods. The perfect squares method is to, um, we're going to break the radicand into, into its largest perfect square factors and simplify. Okay, so here's what that means. Factors are numbers that go into this number evenly. So for example, two is a factor of 20 because it goes into 20 10 times evenly, okay? Um, so I want a factor that goes into 20 that is a perfect square. So something that I know I can take the square root of and get a nice whole number. So examples, 1, 4, 9, and here's kind of a helpful hint, guys. We don't want to use 1 because that's not going to change anything. So I'm looking for these. So I know 4 goes into 20, right? 20 is the same as 4 times 5, okay? So based on this rule right here, I can actually break that into two separate square roots, square root of four times the square root of five. And this is a perfect square. Square root of four is just two. So two times the square root of five, we can write like this, which reading that a lot of times you'll hear kind of the shorthand term, two root five, okay, is kind of how to say that. Five does not have any perfect square factors that go into it, so this is a simplified radical. All right, 75. So I'm looking for a perfect square that goes into 75 even evenly. So 25 goes in, 25 times three, break it into two separate, and square root of 25 being a perfect square, I can write it as just five, and then times square root of three. Okay, I have this two out front, that's multiplication here, so it's two times square root of 18. So I'm just gonna leave the two out front for now. And I want to rewrite 18 using its perfect square factor. So the biggest one that goes into 18 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, so I have 2 times square root of 9 times square root of 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So I get, sorry, I'm going to move up here. So I got 2 times 3 times square root of 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Root 2. 
So notice here, you guys, I can multiply regular numbers together and I can multiply radicals together. I can't actually do the two, um, like here I couldn't do six times two is 12. Those are not really alike, right? This one's under a radical and this one's not. So be careful about that. So I stop here at six times the square root of two. I don't write it as square root of 12 because six is outside of the radical. Okay. This one is called the prime factorization method. I like to also call this one the buddy method. So this one, I don't necessarily have to look for a perfect square. I am going to look for pairs, okay, or buddies. So we are going to break the radicand down to its prime factors and any pairs become one uh, and go in front of the radical. Okay, so that might sound confusing. I'm going to show you what I mean here. So 60, okay? So I'm going to think about what numbers multiply together to be 60, okay? So right away when I think about that, I think 6 and 10. That's just what comes to my mind. Neither of those are perfect squares. So using the other method, the, those numbers aren't helpful. But this method, it doesn't matter what numbers you pick. So I'm choosing 6 and 10. And I'm going to write it kind of as a factor tree. I'm going to break this down as far as I can. So I'm going to keep going, but not to the point where I have to use a 1. So now I'm thinking about what numbers multiply it to be 6. I'm thinking 2 and 3. Okay? I can't go any further than that with either of those numbers without using 1, so I'm stopping. Okay, now 10. 2 times 5 is 10. Again, can't go any further without using 1. So 2 times 3 times 2 times 5, that breakdown, still equals 60. Okay, so I just broken it down to what we call its prime factors. All of these numbers, I can't break down any further. Okay, so what I'm looking for is pairs. So once I break a number down, I'm going to cross it out. I'm not using that. This is what's left here. Okay, so I have a pair of twos. So anytime I have a pair, it becomes, instead of two twos, it becomes one, and it's out in front of the radical. Any numbers that don't have a buddy the three and the five stay underneath the radical. And remember, this is a factor tree. It's all tied together through multiplication. So when I put it back, I also multiply it back together. So three times five, they're both under the square root. So I can go ahead and do that multiplication and write it as two times the square root of 15. Okay, let's try 180. Again, it doesn't matter what first two numbers you choose. You can use any that you want, okay? So I'm thinking 18 and 10. Any number that ends in a zero, 10 is a multiple of that, okay? Or a factor of that, excuse me. So break down 18, I'm thinking 9 and 2. 9 I can go further, 3 and 3. So I'm going to cross out the ones I broke down. So I've got 3, 3, and 2 on this side. 10, 2, and 5. So here's what I have left, 3, 3, 2, 2, 5. So I have two pairs this time. I have a pair of threes and a pair of twos. So those buddies become one. I did hear this analogy once. They're right now all underneath the radical. They, you know, they say when you get married, you become one. So that's what's happening here. These buddies, okay, are becoming one and they're going out front. So I have a three out front and a two. Again, what do I do with those? This operation is multiplication, tying all these together. The lonely five does not have a buddy, it's left underneath. Three times two is six, and square root of five is all I have left, okay? All right, 3,000. Okay, so the one that comes to my mind is 1,000 times three. Okay, and again, you can use any ones that you want. That's just the ones that I'm thinking of. So 1,000. Let's see, I could do 10 times 100. So I'm gonna do 100, 10, three I can't break down anymore. 100 I could break into 10 and 10. Now 10 and 10 I could break down further, but I, I'm actually not going to because it's a pair right now. So I'm not gonna break that down any further. 
okay? Now this 10, I could break down further into two and five, but I still don't have any pairs, right? So all three of these are gonna stay underneath and a pair of tens is gonna become one out front. So I have two times five times three, 10, two times five is 10 times three is 30. So 10 times the square root of 30 is the simplified form of that radical. All right, guys, so those are the two methods. You can use whichever one you like more, um, and you'll have a practice worksheet to practice simplifying so you can hone in that skill.